Florida. It is wonderful to be here in our home state. Thank you for taking the time to be here and for supporting the administration. We love you too. For those of you who are still deciding who to vote for on Tuesday, I hope that what I have to say will prove to you that a vote for President Trump is a vote for a better America. In a time when hate, negativity, and fear are the messages the media streams into our homes and the large tech companies are protecting political censorship, we need to remember what is really important. My husband's administration is focused on the future. The, the health and safety of the American people, the education and well-being of our children, the safety and security of our streets and communities, and the protection of our fundamental family values. Under Donald's leadership, we have blocked out the noise and focused on you, the American people. Under my husband's leadership, our nation is respected again. Our borders are safer. We have won wars and we have stayed out of new conflicts. We have made historic peace deals in the Middle East. We didn't just talk about it. We moved our embassy to Jerusalem. The president stands with our friend Israel more than any other president before. Our allies are now doing their fair share globally. Our economy soared and unemployment shrank. Our military is stronger than ever. Opportunities for women and especially working mothers expanded in our workforce. <laughs> Healthcare for every citizen remains a priority for him. And as you have seen over these past years, he won't stop until he gets it done. <laughs> we have a law and order president. Donald fights to protect and support all our people. He also fully supports our men and women in uniform. While others are calling to defund them. We have faith in our judges and our legal system to rule justly. We respect our heritage and we condemn all hate. We should always learn from our past, and it is more important than ever that we never forget it. Under this president, our American values and ideals are protected, cherished, and upheld. We have had three incredible years of making America great again. In early 2020, our nation began feeling the effects of a global pandemic, a virus that invaded our nation and no one really understood. 
Now, because of our amazing medical capabilities and resources, we are in the process of developing powerful therapeutics and vaccine. A vaccine is not a partisan issue. If you are not supporting the safe production of a vaccine, you're not supporting the health and safety of the American people. There is no room to play politics on this topic in the midst of pandemic. I want to take this moment to say thank you to the many amazing frontline workers who are with us today. Thank you for all that you are doing. You keep our most vulnerable citizens safe. Our administration fully supports you and will continue to work tirelessly to ensure that you are equipped with all the medical supplies you need. This, this administration also continue working to develop safer procedures and practices so that children can get back in the classroom. So that businesses can continue reopening and people can start earning an income again. This president and his team are focused on not only destroying the virus and building back the economy, they're focused on the creating ways for people to safely stop isolating and start gathering with friends again on a safe distances. This is about mental health as much as it is psychical. of hope, not a country of fear or weakness. And we have a leader who shows us that every single day. President Trump chooses to move this country forward. This country deserves a president with proven results not empty words and promises. <laughs> on Tuesday, the direction of our, of our country will take is in your own, your own hands. I ask that you join us in continuing to put America first. <laughs> Together, we will overcome this pandemic and continue building the brightest future for generations to come. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless your families. It is now my pleasure to welcome the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Wow, thank you very much. That was a little bit of a surprise. That was a surprise. Thank you, Melania. Good job. They love our First Lady. They love our First Lady. Always are. And America is blessed to have you. Thank you very much, honey. That was great. So I'm thrilled to be here in my, our home state, Florida. I love this state, and I love the people of this state. And five days from now, we are going to win Florida. We are going to win four more years in the White House. And we're going on to win a record share of the Hispanic American vote. You see what's happening? 
Oh, they're very concerned back there. The fake news, they are so concerned. Melania, you don't know too much about them. You've seen enough. But they are very unhappy. You know what's happening, don't you? You see what's happening? We've led Florida every single day. What's going on? This is a terrible thing for them. Actually, it's a good thing for them. They just don't know it. They haven't quite figured that out yet. No, we're doing incredibly in Florida. We're doing incredibly all over. And this isn't based on polls. This is based on fact. This is based on votes that are coming in. But you have to get out and vote. We are creating the greatest red wave in the history of our country. Oh, it's been amazing. We'll talk about it in a little while. I want to get some of the little introductions and introductory things out. But we have to talk about the uh, what's going on in our country with the big tech. You know the power of big tech? They're incredible. They're incredible. No, no, no. I heard about the power for a long time, the power of big tech. I heard about it four years ago. Sir, big tech is against you. They're tremendously powerful. You can't beat them. Then we had the election, we won. I said, oh, how did that happen? And the fake news media, 94% of the stories about us are negative. Think of it. Think of it. 64% of the stories about Sleepy Joe are positive. How the hell do you have a positive story about this guy? How do you have a positive story about him? This election is a choice between my plan to deliver Historic, and you know what this is going to be, right? Historic. This is historic prosperity. Another major tax cut to go along with the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And record job growth. And Joe Biden's plan is to deliver punishing lockdowns. He's going to lock you down. And Florida's all opened up. You have a great governor. Did he speak too long today or not? No? No, I watched him on the plane. I said, oh, look, there's Ron. You know, they have the little thing in the box. I said, oh, look, there's Ron. He's speaking. He looked like he was up there a long time. No. <laughs> he said yes. Uh, he's a great governor. You have a great governor. He's a great guy. They want to give you massive tax hikes. It's the first time that I've ever seen, I've been with politics all my life, essentially, only doing this for a few years on this side of it. But we've done well, haven't we, when you think? A senator came into my office and said, sir, an older guy, nice guy, pro, total pro. Sir, I've been in nine races, and I've won seven of them, sir, and I'm a United States senator. I said, Senator, I've been one race, and I've won one. Now we want to win two, but I won one. But it was the presidency. We took them all by surprise, didn't we? We took them by surprise. They're still trying to recover. And you will have a crippling depression, the likes of which you've never seen if Sleepy Joe becomes your president. And your 401ks, throw them out the window, because you know what's going to happen. And you know, our stock market has a big headwind. The headwind is if he wins. And we are doing great. Do you see the number today? 33.1 GDP, the biggest in the history of our country, by almost triple, right? Almost triple. No, it's uh, very much bigger than any GDP we've ever had. You have to go back to the 1950s, and then it's less than half. This is the greatest number, 33.1%. If you asked me two weeks ago, I would have said, I'll take 12%. 12% would have been very nice. Nobody ever heard of 12%. 33.1. And let me tell you what they're going to do. I never even thought of this one. They won't even talk about it. This is the biggest event in business in 50 years. Nobody's ever seen a number like this. This is bigger than any nation. No nation has a number like that. Other nations right now, they're, look, we were compared to Europe. Germany is doing so well. France is doing so well. Everyone's doing so well. No, they're not doing well. And you take a look at what's going on, and we want the best for them. We're on their team. We want to work with them and everything else. But they're not doing well. They're spiking up big. They're shutting down. They're locking down. I disagree with that, because we're never going to lock down again. We locked down. We understood the disease. And now we're open for business, and that's what it is.
And that's what it is. This explosive economic growth is four times greater than what the experts expected. They expected a number that would be like 7 percent, 8 percent. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to go back home. You're going to say, that was incredible. Melania was unbelievable. The governor, the governor was incredible. He, I've never heard anybody speak like that. Trump was OK, too, not bad. But we have no choice. We have to vote for Trump because it's between Trump and Sleepy Joe and anybody beats Sleepy Joe. I could take a couple of these guys. They're friends of mine. They're not good people. They're better than Joe, I will tell you. Now, do you believe what I'm running against? I'm running against the worst candidate in the history of presidential politics. I don't care. Win, lose, or draw. This is the worst candidate in the history. He shouldn't be there. Because Pocahontas kept going, instead of getting out, then it would have been against Bernie, which would have been fine, too. You know what? You would have had a more energetic base if we had Bernie. That's one thing. Because I don't know if they have a base. Here's what's happened. He goes for a speech. They're showing you thousands and thousands. Look, as far as the — all the way back to that building, as far as the eye can see. And Biden is leaving his basement today. He took the lid off. You know what he does? He takes the lid off, runs to the closest part of Delaware, like if he can get a little piece of Pennsylvania. People in Pennsylvania are wise to him. They know all about his no fracking, no fracking, no fracking. Then he gets to Pennsylvania. He learns it's a million jobs. And by the way, Pennsylvania, they give us that you can fire up your factories. They give us the energy, and it's inexpensive energy. So he goes to Pennsylvania. All of a sudden, he changes. Yes, so I have nothing against fracking. And the press doesn't call him out on it, right? And they don't call him out on where's Hunter. They don't call him out where's Hunter. Where's Hunter? Is Hunter in the crowd? They don't call him out. They don't call him out on where's Hunter. That's oh, crazy. That's crazy. You know, some people said I get a call from all the experts, right? Guys that ran for president six, seven, eight times. Never got past the first round, but they're calling me up. Sir, you shouldn't be speaking about Hunter. You shouldn't be saying bad things about Biden because nobody cares. I disagree. You know, maybe that's why I'm here and they're not. But they say, they say, talk about your economic success. Talk about 33.1 percent, the greatest in history. Now, look, if I do, I mean, how many times can I say it? I'll say it five or six times during the speech, 33.1. But you look at that, and you look at Tucker Carlson, what he did the other night. Great. Great. And followed up by Sean, and followed up by Laura. And the next day, nothing at all, right? Nothing. Nothing in the New York Times, the fake New York Times. Hey, how about Anonymous? Did we see Anonymous? A low staffer. Anonymous turned out to be a guy. I'm trying to figure out, I don't know who the hell this guy is. So the New York Times said, a senior White House official. Nobody knew who he was. This was a, look, we are in big trouble with the press. They are truly the enemy of the people. They are the enemy of the people. So this guy, this guy goes out, it's low life. Oh, I never, I never saw him. I think he has a picture of me standing there, like I do with thousands of people. This low life goes out and he writes a book. By the way, when he left, he had nothing but praise for the Trump. Oh, it's incredible, incredible. Then somebody gets him at the New York Times, the fake New York Times, and all of a sudden he becomes nasty. And he writes, and they say, a top White House official. Well, he was a staffer, low had nothing to do with the White House. He had nothing to do. And he goes in, and you know what? There should be major criminal liability for some scum like this. And you know, for a year, everybody walks into my office, Secretary of State Pompeo. 
I could name every one of them, all good people. I'm looking at them and saying, I wonder if that could be the one, right? You know? And it turns out to be this low life that nobody knows who the hell he is. He had nothing to do with us. I don't think I ever met him, and I might have met him. I think somebody said, he has a picture of me standing someplace. This is a disgrace to our country. It shouldn't happen, and he should be prosecuted. Are you listening to me back in Washington? He should be prosecuted. Along with the New York Times, because it was a story made up, it was fake news made up by the New York Times. And you know who he works for now? CNN. He works for CNN right there. See the camera right there with the light that just went off. It just See that, honey? That red light just went off. Fake news, CNN. And Anderson Cooper. And Anderson Cooper asked him, are you anonymous? And he lied to him. He said no, essentially. <laughs> said, no, I'm not. And he works for CNN. I would think CNN would be firing him about, but this is a real low life. You know who else he works for? Google. He works for Google. I think Google should fire him very quickly because bad things are going to happen to him. But think of what he does to our government. Right? It's like a, a horrible, treasonous, horrible thing that you can do this and you can get away with it. Weekly jobless claims. This is boring, but it's really good. Just hit a seven-month low. In other words, from the beginning of the pandemic, seven months ago. No, we're going to have next year the best year we've ever had economically. And it's true. Biden is holding back the stock market because, you know, it's an election. Crazy things could happen. Maybe 100 percent of the people in Florida decide not to vote. You know, you never know. But we have a headwind, so it's gone down a little bit over the last few days because, you know, you're coming close, and it could be. We're going to win this election so big. You watch. You watch. We're going to win it so big. And that's the only reason the market's going down. The market's going down because if he gets in, Seriously, you're going to have one of the worst depressions we've ever had. You're going to have, and John Roberts from Fox is back there, and I think he agrees. And John Roberts is very unhappy because he doesn't want his 401k to go down the tubes. Now, John's treated us very fairly. Not perfect. He's not perfect, I will say. But he's been overall pretty good. He's pretty good. So CNN, Google, we got to do something about all of it. New York Times is fake. It's fake. They write so many fake stories. Thanks to our policies, America is experiencing the fastest and biggest recovery. We're having the best recovery anywhere in the world. No other country, small or large, is recovering like us. Think of that. In the past five months, we've created a record 11.4 million American jobs, the fastest job growth in the history of our country. Our job growth has been 23 times faster than the first five months under Obama-Biden recovery, which was, by the way, the worst recovery since the Great Depression. You do know that, right? And just, you know, because all, all Biden does is talks about COVID, right? He doesn't call it the China virus. You know why? Because China hasn't paid off. He can't use that term. You know, they gave his son one and a half billion to manage. He makes millions of dollars a year, I assume, right? The smartest guys on Wall Street said, no, sir, that could not have happened. We can't get it. No, he got it. It took him about, what, 10 minutes. He walked in, he walked out with one and a half billion. Hey, maybe he's not so stupid after all, right? That's the only thing. I thought he was so dumb. Maybe he's not as dumb as we think. He can't, look, he cannot take on China. I didn't say anything. I didn't. The problem is Biden is totally, the biggest story, no, the second biggest story. The worst was when they spied on my campaign, and they got caught. That's the biggest political corruption story in the history of our country. But this could very well be second. And we have what's called the laptop from hell. 
a laptop from hell. From what I've understood, you only have seen a tiny portion of it. But you know what the press is now doing? They're blaming Russia. It's Russia did it. Russia is the one that created the laptop. And Russia brought it into that little shop to have it fixed. Russia. I think Russia's looking at us and saying, those people are stone cold crazy. This is no, it was Russia's fault. They said it loud and clear. It was Russia, Russia, Russia. Aren't we tired of this crap? I saw Schiff. I saw Schiff the other day, two days ago. Watermelon, you know, he looks like a watermelon head, right? Remember he lied in the halls of Congress? He read my conversation with the president of Ukraine. But it wasn't my conversation. Hey, how great. Do we love those people that took down the language? Professional military people, word for word for word. If I didn't have it, it would have been my word against Shifty Schiff, right? Eight times he said quid pro quo. Think of what that means. Eight times you've asked for the same thing. The guy on the other, after the third time, the guy on the other side would say, he's got some serious problems. I don't even know him. I called him to say, congratulations on becoming president of Ukraine. And for that, I got impeached. But you know what we have? We have a lot of great Republicans, and I hope you're going to be voting for those Republicans also. Great Republicans. We have one of them here, Mark Meadows. Has anyone ever heard of Mark Meadows? Took me three years to get him out of Congress and become chief of staff. He's great. He's here. He was one of our great ones. And you know who helped me a lot, it, honestly? In fact, I said, don't run for governor, Ron. Stay exactly where he was a congressman, you governor, right? There he is. Look at Mark. He's out there working with the phone. He's got the phone going. He uses two at one time, right? But your governor was another one. He stood up. You know, he's Harvard and Yale. Do you know that? Your governor. He doesn't talk about it. He doesn't talk about it. But he would be on television defending me and fighting for me. There was a group, Jim Jordan. Did anyone ever hear of Jim Jordan? Jim Gordon, 128 and one. You know, Jim was an NCAA wrestling champion, one of the best, one of the best. He was a great one. He was a great one. And you know, when you win like he won, he won everything. When you win like that, it's also right here. It's muscle. But it's got to be muscle attached to a lot of brain, right? You guys know. The athletes know that. But Jim was great. And, uh, but Ron was, Ron was fantastic. Your governor, he asked me, he said, would you support me for governor? I said, no, not really. I'd rather have you stay right where you are, you know? You're doing a good job of defending me. But think of it, what we had to do. And we got 197 to nothing in the House. Think of that. 197 to nothing. And then we went to the Senate. And we had 52 and a half to a half. You know who the half was, but that's okay. That was the guy that, sleepy Joe Biden, he couldn't remember his name. Remember, he said the guy from, uh, the guy from, isn't he, the governor from that place, uh, Utah. Utah. I don't know his name. I can't remember his name. It was Romney. Now, sleepy Joe's a little bit off. Let's face it, sleepy Joe is shot. And I'm not a fan of his, and he's not a nice guy. Just, you know, I feel better. If he was a nice guy, I couldn't say these things. He's not a nice guy. Now he doesn't remember whether or not he used to be a nice guy. He was never considered smart. He was a touchy-feely guy. You know those guys? Touchy-feely. But not a nice guy, not a smart guy. Our incredible First Lady is sitting here right now, and she's saying, and she's saying to herself, I wonder if all rallies are like this. Now, most of them are a little bit different, but that's okay. You know why, honey? We're in Florida. This is like home. This is home. Right? This is home. We say it like it is. We say it like it is. We created the greatest economy in history, and now we are doing it again. See all that hat, that beautiful hat. Let's make America great again, right? We're going to make a new one. Let's make America great again, again. We did it. We did it. Now we're doing it again. My first lady wants to do it again. Under my leadership, 
the Florida tourism industry and hospitality industry will come roaring back very soon. It's ready to happen. We're making the turn. We've got the vaccines coming very soon. The FDA has worked miracles. They had no choice. They had no This would have taken, if Joe was in charge, you wouldn't have a vaccine for four years. I was going to say, he, he was in charge of the swine flu. He calls it N1, H1. It's actually H1, N1. I say, Joe, it's not. It's H1. H comes. It's easy, because H comes before N. I said, Joe, Joe, that's what it is. I said, just call it swine flu. You don't have to call it. Don't, the numbers are too complicated. <laughs> Three days ago, he said, I'm a proud Democrat running for the United States Senate, and I hope I have <laughs> You can't put the look. We can't play games. You know, you've seen enough. Have you seen enough? This is crazy. But based on the early numbers I've seen, I think you understand exactly what I'm talking about. You know, we have the potential. We have the greatest country in the world, but we have the potential to go to places that we've never been in a positive manner. We can, the potential of our country is so incredible. And you see it happening already. You look at Germany, you look at all of these countries, they're now locked down, they've got a lot of problems. You look at our numbers, look at our recovery, fastest recovery. We went down the least economically, went down by far. As much as it's painful and terrible, we went down the least. We've done an incredible job. It was projected that we would lose 2.2 million people, right? The projections were 2.2 million. By the way, we shouldn't have lost one person. China should have never let this happen. They should have never let it escape. And we will not forget. We will not forget. Biden's agenda will devastate the Hispanic American community. He betrayed Hispanic Americans for 47 years. He's been very bad to the Hispanic Americans. And what, what is happening with those poll numbers? I have the highest numbers. We are now, according to the polls I'm showing, which are real polls, we are now beating the Democrats for the first time ever with Hispanic Americans. First time ever. First time ever. And I've always loved them, and I think they've always loved me. First time ever. First time ever. And the, the fakers back there are going crazy. And now Biden wants to close your small businesses and confiscate your guns. Second Amendment. Don't worry about it. The Second Amendment. While letting far-left rioters, looters, and vandals roam free. Look what he's doing in Philadelphia. Look what, what's happening. Those are people that He's supporting. He couldn't even come out against them yesterday. They asked him a question. He said, uh, what's Philadelphia? Where is, it? Where is it? He didn't know what state it was in. Other than that, he's doing a wonderful job. Could you imagine? Could you imagine losing to this guy? Could you imagine? Our first lady will have to say, darling, I don't know if this is impossible. But you have to be very careful when you say that. You know, whenever I say anything that even uses the word losing, the fake news said, he is thinking about losing. This is a big story. President Trump thinks he's going to lose. No, I don't. I don't. I think you're going to lose. And I think you've lost all credibility. And our elegant first lady sits and she says, what the hell is happening here? This election is a choice between the American dream and a socialist nightmare. That's what it is. It's socialism. Venezuela, I used to say Venezuela are on steroids. This is, this would be, if they got in, a very, very, very large version of Venezuela, and it can happen with the Green New Deal and all these crazy, you know, look, AOC plus three. I heard she's very insulted that I call her AOC. I'm not. I call her AOC plus three. That's the three characters that I, like Ilhan Omar. I'm going to win Minnesota because of Ilhan Omar. She tells us how to run our country. <laughs> She's telling us how to run our country. I don't think so. Ilhan Omar. Oh, so we're going to win the state of Minnesota for two reasons. Her and the fact that when Minneapolis had their problem, they should have called us sooner. But when they called us, how long did it take? 25 minutes? It was extinguished. We could have done it in the first hour instead of waiting for a week and a half. But the governors, they have to call. And I give the governor credit. He eventually called. He eventually called. 
They should call us, I'll tell you, Oregon. They should call us in Portland. Oh, would I love to go in with the anarchists? They would last 15 minutes. Our guys, you know, you got to, like, hold them back. They want to, let us in, sir. We'd like to go in. I meet them. I see troops. Sir, we'd like to go into Oregon. We'll take care of them. I say, just calm down. <laughs> just calm down. It wouldn't take them long. It would take them about 15. How long? And then we'd, well, we'd do things. And then eventually they'd end up going home about 10 years later. Back home to mom and dad where they started in the basement. Antifa. You know Antifa? So Biden called it an idea. He said, Antifa's just an idea. I said, no, when you get hit over the head behind your back with a baseball bat, that's not an idea. That's not an idea. But he called, didn't he call the United States? He called the United States an idea, too. I said, no, no, it's not an idea. The United States is a great nation. That's what it is. It's not an idea. He called us an idea, so he puts us in the same category as Antifa. As long as I am president, America will never be a socialist country. And I say it all the time. This election will decide whether our children will be condemned to the misery of socialism or whether they will inherit the glorious legacy of American freedom. This election will decide whether the Biden-Harris, how about her? How about her? I'll tell you what, when our great Vice President, Mike Pence, debated her, it was a total... You know the expression? If it were a fight, they would have ended it. Within two days, they were saying the fake news. She did magnificently well against Mike Pence. No, no. No, that's what happens. You know, you do great, great, great. Two days later, you realize they have it down that you lost now. Mike did fantastically. He's a great vice president. He works very hard. And I'll tell you one thing. You know, his kids are in the military and their teachers. I guarantee you one thing. Mike Pence has not made hundreds of millions of dollars by scamming foreign countries. Because that's what they've done. They've made hundreds of millions of dollars. And they can't, and nobody wants to talk about it. Look at that. Oh, are they doing that on purpose? Are they friend or foe? I don't know. I actually felt good. I felt water on my face. I said, where the hell is that coming from? They may be doing that on purpose. Let's find out if they're friend or foe. And if they're foe, let's take care of those son of a bitches. Look at that. Are you OK? Oh, look, they're hitting the press. <laughs> That's OK. Oh, there go the cameras. There goes a million dollars worth of equipment. Look at that. Wow. That's cool, actually. And I'll tell the media, I have nothing to do with that. But it is sort of like cooling. I'm feeling like a little. That's great. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I say it all the time, because we've liked Ronald Reagan. We've liked a lot of, you know, people. Mostly they're stiffs, mostly. Generally speaking, they don't do the job, right? But we've had good ones like Ronald Reagan. He's the one I think about. But nobody ever chanted. First of all, he'd never get a crowd like this. He'd have two or 300 people. They'd be in a ballroom. That would be, that was like the norm. Nobody have, you got to see yesterday, we had 35, 40,000 people. We were in Arizona. The, day before, two days before, we were in Pennsylvania. We did three in Pennsylvania, one bigger than the next, like this. And you know what's common? The love. It's all the same. The love is incredible. Love for our country. It's the love for our country. But there's never been a chant, we love you. I'm watching this guy here. He looks like he could take on anybody in the world. He's a big, strong guy. I don't think he's ever cried in his life before. And I see him wiping away tears. We love you. We love you. This guy. He hasn't cried since he was a baby and probably didn't cry then either. And now he's crying. No, there has never been that chant before, and I appreciate it. And I'll cry. That's why I ended early. I'll, I'll cry, except I don't want them to say, your president broke down in tears today. I don't know. That's not cool. We don't want, we don't want President Xi 
of China to say, gee, I just saw something that surprises me. You know, we've taken billions and billions of dollars out of China. We gave 28 billion to our farmers, 28 right out of China. I don't want to have. But then the plague came in, right? Then the plague came in. That's sort of everything. You know, we made a great deal with China. The ink wasn't dry before the plague came in, so it's a whole different feeling. I will say, three weeks ago, they ordered more coin, corn, more soybeans, more beef than at any time in the history of this country. So they obviously think I'm going to win. They obviously think we're going to win. And they want to make us happy, but we're not happy, because that should have been stopped. And it's not here all over the world. You see what's going on in Europe. It's so sad. But you see what's going on. 188 countries all over the world. What China has done to this world, what they've done, people come up to me, they're clothed in masks and stuff and this. Hello, President. Hello. I said, look, look at this. What China has done to our country, what China, what, it, I may do that. You better be careful. What China has done to this country, what, it's not the first time either. Paying. They're paying. But you can never pay for 200,000 more lives. You can never pay for that. Yeah, we can, we can make them pay plenty. But uh, 210,000 lives. But it would have been 2 million lives. It's incredible the job that we've done and that the American people have done. This could have been 2 million lives. He said 2.2 million lives. No, they're going to pay. We believe in safe streets, secure communities, and we believe in law and order, not like in Philadelphia. And they can't let that happen. They can't let the looters run wild. They can't do it. You can't. You either have law and order or you don't. Philadelphia can't do what they're doing. And they have good police in Philadelphia. They like Trump, I can tell you. I've, got, I've been endorsed by every law enforcement group. New York's finest. They endorsed me. They've never endorsed a presidential candidate. New York's finest endorsed me. It was a great honor, because I grew up with New York's finest. They're, then they are. They're incredible people. They're not being allowed to do their job. They've been way — he cut back a billion dollars he took back, and now crime is way up. That's not even the money. They're not being allowed. They're incredible people. Tough as hell. Fair. They love our country. They're not being allowed in New York to do our job between the governor and the mayor. They're being just absolutely — and they want to leave. They want to get out. They have plenty of other opportunity. They don't need the danger. It's a dangerous job for all police. But we've been endorsed by New York. We were endorsed by Chicago police. The Chicago police, that's tough. We've been endorsed by all of you sheriffs. You have sheriffs. You have great, tough sheriffs. I know many of them, but the sheriffs — we had a big ceremony two months ago in Florida. Ron was there. You were endorsed. We got endorsed by the sheriffs, all law enforcement all over Florida. And I asked Sleepy Joe at the debate, I said, Joe, name one law enforcement agency, just one in the whole country that endorsed you. He couldn't do it, remember? Then Chris Wallace saved him. I had two people. I was, I was going against Chris Wallace and him. Uh, Chris, Chris was much tougher, actually. Chris was tougher than Joe. And then I said, Joe, say the words law and order. No. Say the words law and order, Joe. Say them. And then Chris Wallace, he doesn't have to do that. Oh, okay, Chris, thanks. Chris. <laughs> now, I like Chris's father a lot better than I like him, Mike Wallace, the great Mike Wallace. You know, he did me on 60 Minutes. It was a great, it was one of the few good pieces. You know, he was a tough guy. Chris tries to be like him, but he doesn't have what it takes. But Mike Wallace was a tough, tough guy. And he did me on 60 Minutes, and it was a great piece. He's never recovered from that originally, but he's — he passed away. He was a great guy and a great, great reporter, I'll tell you. And he was a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. That didn't mean much to Chris. All we want is fairness, right? And I will tell you, Kristen Welker, I thought she was very good. I really do. I thought she — she shouldn't have been, because she was far left. Her family's a supporter of Democrats. Her father's a big supporter of Democrats. She's a supporter of Democrats. Should have been very unfair. I think she went out of her way. And most people say she wasn't, wasn't really fair to me. 
but she was because she always gave me 10 seconds. She said, okay. See, Chris should have done that. You have 10 seconds. 10 seconds to me is like an eternity. We did a lot of damage in that 10 seconds, including to get him to admit that he doesn't want oil. He doesn't want oil. I said, Texas and Pennsylvania and Ohio, are you listening? Are you listening? And you'll see they were listening on November 3rd. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait till November 3rd. Texas, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Oklahoma, North Dakota, they're all listening. And you're listening because you don't want your energy prices to go through the roof, right? And Michigan was listening because they want to produce cars and they don't want to spend all that money on energy when they're producing all of those factories that I got to go back to Michigan and go back to Ohio and go back to North Carolina and start brand new. And I'd see Prime Minister Abe of Japan. I'd say, Prime Minister, we're tired of taking your millions of cars. You got to let us have factories. Well, we can't do that. This is a private decision. No, no, it's not. You got to do it. But that is not government. I said, you're a powerful man, Shinzo. He just retired. Unfortunately, he got ill, but he was a great man. He a great prime minister, great guy, too. But I said, Shinzo, you have to do it. I'm sorry. We're not going to take your cars. You got to make them in this country, in our country. And he said, I can't do that, but let me work on it. The following morning, five major Japanese companies announced they were coming to America, and they did. I called him up. I said, Shinzo, I know you had nothing to do with it, but thank you anyway. No, they run it, they run it tough over in Japan and China and these other places. Tuesday, your vote is going to save our country. Most important election we've ever had. We're going to defeat. We are going to defeat the Marxists and the socialists and the rioters and the flag burners and the left-wing extremists. We are going to defeat the anarchists, the anarchists. With your support, we will fight for American workers. We will defend our Second Amendment. Don't worry, it's very safe. If Biden got in, your Second Amendment is gone so fast. You know that. Support our police. Protect our borders. Expand school choice, so important. Ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. That's what's going to happen. My plan for America will deliver a safe vaccine. You're going to have it in a few weeks. It's coming very quickly. Great companies, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer, many, many companies. You're going to have it. Seniors will be first in line to get it, and we will make it available to everybody free. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. We're protecting our seniors. You know, if you're a senior and if you have a heart condition, if you have any kind of a certain type, especially diabetes, you're in big trouble if you get hit by the China virus. Big, big trouble. So we're going to make that vaccine. We're going to make it free. And it's coming from great, great firms. Our vaccine will eradicate the virus. And by the way, we have it. But whether we have it or not, it's rounding the turn. It's rounding the turn. Hey, excuse me. I'm sure you didn't hear. Nobody heard this, right? I had it. Did you know that? I had to get back on the trail. I said, this is not good timing. And I got better very quickly. Uh, First Lady had it. She had it. And she got better very quickly. But I'll tell you who had it also. The doctor went to the First Lady and myself and said, Baron has tested positive. I said, excuse me, doctor, tested positive for what? He's got COVID. I said, okay. Then about 12 minutes later, I said, doctor, doctor, how's Baron doing? He's our very tall son, very tall. Has anybody noticed he's slightly tall? <laughs> he's 14, and I'm saying, hello, Baron. <laughs> no, he's great, but he's strong. But I, I said, like 12 minutes later, Dr. Sean, great doctor. We have great doctors. One thing, when you are president, you have a lot of doctors. Johns Hopkins, I want to thank them. Walter Reed Medical Center, incredible. I mean, Doc Ronnie is now a congressman from Texas. How about that? Yeah. Doc Ronnie, he was before Sean, and Sean is now. We have, Sean has been great. But Sean came up along with other doctors that Barron had it. About 12 seconds later, I said, how's Barron doing? Oh, he's okay. He shed it. It's gone. It was gone like in two minutes. 
I said, hey, how come that doesn't happen with me? But I wasn't bad, you know, it was like a day. But they gave me a drug, Moderna. Who the hell knows? This was, uh, this was a very, Moderna makes it. I'll tell you who makes it really a great version. They say Eli Lilly, right? Regeneron. And they gave it to me, and I woke up the next morning, and I felt I could have taken the toughest, meanest person in this group. Regeneron. Now, I don't know whether or not it worked. I like to think it had no impact. I made a statement. I said, well, I'm in no trouble because I'm young and I'm in perfect physical shape. I'm a perfect physical specimen. And CNN went crazy. He's not young and he's not in perfect. They, they can't take a joke. No, but I was better. I was better quickly. I was better very quickly. We reduced the fatality rate. 85%, and now we have the lowest infection fatality rate anywhere in the world by far. Thanks to our unrelenting efforts. And by the way, remdesivir was also approved. It's supposed to have a great effect. I mean, I said, give me whatever the hell you have, just give it to me. I wasn't choosy. You know, the first lady, I don't want anything I don't want. She's very particular, right? If I say, take an aspirin, you'll feel better. No, no, I don't want an aspirin, right? She doesn't want that. Only 3% of hospitalizations are right now China virus. So think of that. So our hospitals are ready if they, something should happen. But that's what, yeah, I appreciate that. He said, we trust you. You can. We are doing the greatest job of this. We, except with one thing, publicity. Our public relations, we're spending too much time working and not enough time talking, but no matter what you say to these people, it won't make any difference, you know. And because of the advances in treatment we pioneered, the survival rate is far over 99. For many groups, it's 99.9%. .9%. And for under 70, it's unbelievably high. For over 70 now, it's getting very good. And uh, the drug they gave me that what we're doing is we're going to make that available, including the very similar drug, it's antibody, a very similar drug from Eli Lilly. We're going to make that available to anybody that needs it should they get the China virus. We're going to make it available free. So if anybody, if anybody's going to need it, if anybody's going to need it, Joe Biden's plan will delay the vaccine, postpone therapies, prolong the pandemic, crush our economy, crush our economy. We can't do this. Destroy the Florida tourism industry and lock down our entire country. We'll be locked down. Under Biden's lockdown, countless Americans will die from suicide, drug overdoses, deferred medical care, abuse. The thing that's happening to families is the cure, remember, I said it right at the beginning, the cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. And you have Michigan locked down, you have Pence, all Democrat governors. You know what's going to happen? On November 4th, the day after the election, they're going to open it up. They're doing it for political reasons, because it's so bad for their state. And they think our numbers are going to look a little worse. California's pretty much locked down. New York's got to open. New York is becoming a, a very unsafe ghost town. Governor, open up the state, Governor. Open up the state. You'll see our governor. He's going to make a few words in a couple of minutes. Governor from New York is going to be with us in a little while. Are you surprised to see that? You'll see what I mean. There will be no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgivings, no Christmases, no Fourth of Julys. There will be nothing. They will allow you nothing. Other than that, he's doing a wonderful job. Europe imposed crushing lockdowns, and today, Spain has more than two times more new cases per capita than the United States. France has over three times, and Belgium has over seven times what we have. And I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen to them. We're helping them. We're sending them thousands and thousands of ventilators. We've become the ventilator king, we're making thousands of ventilators a month. We're sending them to Europe and all over the world. Sending a lot to Africa. They'll never be able to get them. They'll never be able to make them. We've done an incredible job. Incredible job. European lockdowns 
are not stopping the virus, but they're creating misery, poverty, suffering, and death. You see the riots in the street of Italy today, in the streets of Italy, and the riots they're having in France. The people are tired. They can't do it anymore. They can't do it anymore. They're losing their businesses. They're losing their jobs. They go back, and the business is closed for nine months. We can't do it anymore. They can't do it. We know the disease. We social distance. We do all of the things that you have to do. If you get close, wear a mask. Always controversial. It's not controversial to me. You get close, you wear a mask. Social distance, uh, social distance. You know the bottom line, though? You're going to get better. You're going to get better. If I can get better, anybody can get better. And I got better fast. They were so happy, they couldn't believe it. That was probably the happiest day that they've had in years. And then they came out of the hospital to wave to the people, the supporters. I heard, you know, these really beautiful rooms. Walter Reed is incredible, the best, the best. And rooms, the glass, heavy glass panels over the windows. And through all of that heavy glass, brick and mortar, I could hear people screaming outside a half a mile away. And they were fans of mine with flags, Trump flags. We love our president. And they were there for two days. They stayed there all night. I mean, these people were incredible. And I said to my incredible Secret Service people, there's one of them, Bobby. I know I'm not supposed to say it. Bobby, I love you, Bob. I said, Bobby, I want to go over and see him. No problem, sir. He ripped on that mask. He wouldn't even think about that. I said, let's go over and see him, Bobby. By that time, I was in good shape. I was really, I wanted to get out here with you. But we drove in front of those people, and we waved, and the people were so happy. It was incredible. It was like, it was. It was a love fest. They were so happy. And I got back, and they were saying, what a terrible thing to do. Now, we got to take care of our people, right? We got to stay with our people, <laughs> including Secret Service, who does an incredible job. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. The man, the man. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Secret Service. They do a great job. For half a century, Joe Biden has been outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless foreign wars. In 2016, Florida voted to fire the depraved political establishment, and you elected an outsider as your president who is finally, if you don't mind, putting America first. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Joe Biden is a corrupt politician that the fake news will not write about. They won't write the story. They won't write it, and big tech won't write it. They won't write the story. There's the outside of the New York Post, who just endorsed me, by the way. Thank you very much. It's the fourth largest paper in the country. Got a lot of great endorsements. We got a lot of great Jack Nicholas, you know, Jack. Mm. He can putt. He can do everything. Jack, 78 tournaments he won, and he won 18 majors. Think of that, how great that is. That means under pressure. You know, you need people like that, right? People that can win under pressure. Jack. But Jack gave me a beautiful endorsement. We got endorsements from a lot of newspapers all over. We got a lot of endorsements. If Biden wins, thank you very much. If Biden wins, China wins. When we win, Florida wins and America wins. It's very simple. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. And I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment. It's because I was elected to fight for you, and I have fought for you harder than any president has ever fought for the people he loves. Never. Thank you very much. There's a lot of people. Look where that crowd is. It's, that's, uh, would you like to change places with some people in the back? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. What a crowd. 
But they're all like this, I tell you, no matter where you go. 35,000, 45,000, they never mention it, you know, they never mention it. But with Biden, they never mention it either. I said, show the crowd. You know what, they have circles. Someday I'm gonna hire the guy that does those circles. No, because it's really good. Big, thick, nice circles are perfectly done. It's the best part of his campaign, the circles. And usually, he's got five of them. Usually, he can't fill them up with people, so he puts the fake news in the circle. And then they don't ask him questions. Or how about the question they asked him the other day? He's walking out with ice cream. Sir, what flavor ice cream is it? Uh, I don't know. It's vanilla, I think. Then they asked him a real question. He ran into the car, went back to the basement. Does he have the lid on again today? Almost every day. How do you put the lid? You know, when you do the lid, he did it like five, six days recently. That's like 50% of the campaign. Now they try and say it's because of COVID. They say the fact that he has nobody at all show up is because of COVID. No, it's because nobody shows up. And I think that's the ultimate poll. And based on the numbers that we're getting, uh, we're going to do really well on Tuesday. Tell you. Really well. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows it's an election? And if we do win, you're going to see a stock market that goes through the roof. Your 401ks are going to go up by 50% quickly. You watch. I'm telling you. We know. I know all those guys. They're just petrified at the thought of having massive tax increases, regulation increases. They said, we've been through that. It wasn't good. That's why they had no growth. That's why they had no recovery. Slowest ever. Remember I said that. Slowest since 1929. It's a long time. Not only is Joe Biden corrupt, he's unfit. He has no plan to end the epidemic. It's all talk, no action, like I said at the debate. 91% to 9%. You know what that means? They did polls afterwards. 91, a respected poll. 91% said, I have to do it. I have to brag. You know why? They'll never do it. You know? You know, you know the expression? If you can't get anybody else to do it, do it yourself. No, 91% to 9%. And I'm trying to figure out who was the nine. I want to find who these people were. No, it was uh, just uh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. I think they could have done better. But you know, you never know. Again, this is why. You never know. His policies would create a depression. And he wants you to surrender our country. That's what he wants to do. He wants you to surrender our country to China to all of these other countries that have taken total advantage of us. It's really the reason I'm here. If it weren't for the horrible trade deals with South Korea, with our allies. You know, our allies in many ways treat us worse than the enemy. The enemy, at least we have our guard up. Our allies, what they've done to us in terms of military protection and trade is disgraceful. And when they come out and they say they like Barack Hussein Obama much more than they like Trump, that means I'm doing my job. You see, now Germany said it the other day, and I have roots in Germany, but Germany said it the other day, they like Barack Hussein Obama, and they should, because Germany is delinquent in their NATO payments, very delinquent. They're at a half a level, and they're very rich. They can do whatever they want. It's not like they don't have the money. And I call them out. I say, if you don't pay, we're going to start taking our troops out. And these people go crazy. They go crazy. You watch. Oh, we've already started to do it. They'll pay. But I just want to play you a video from a I, — I was so impressed. It's a little bit — you know, we only do this for people that we love. We have these very expensive boards that come along. And this is a, largely a woman that comes from this area. Her husband happens to be a major league baseball player. You know who I'm talking about? He's a handsome guy, but she's far more beautiful. And he's on Tampa Bay, so he's right now a little depressed. I don't know if he's here or not, but if he is, I want to talk to him and say, you did a great job. Kaylee, please come up here. Kaylee, and play the video, please. Play the video. Joe Biden uh, censored zero times, notably. Uh, no, because we're taking our message directly to the American people. We'll be making five rally stops a day. Five. A uh, thousand show up. Literally, we had 25,000 people uh, show up in Omaha. These are historic crowds. The president takes his message directly to the American people. And shame on Jack Dorsey. As the New York Post noted today, this is a mob artist. This is a shakedown effort to say, delete the Hunter Biden story. The media won't report on it. Social media 
media will censor it, delete it, or we will censor the fourth largest newspaper in the United States. We will block them from social media. Uh, big tech needs to uh, be handled, and this president, in a second term, will do just that because there needs to be equity. There needs to be a, a, a lack of censorship. This is what happens in North Korea, not in the United States of America. Yeah, look, the American people have a very clear choice when it comes to COVID. You can vote on Joe Biden, where you will be locked down. Your schools will be closed. Your churches will be closed. You won't have social gatherings. It will be a lockdown versus President Trump, where, where we are safely reopening this country. Americans deserve jobs. They deserve freedom. Joe Biden's modeling his strategy, which is lockdown in the basement. But this president has surged therapeutics and testing and a vaccine in record time. We can control this, but at the same time, we can open this country and not lock down like Joe Biden will do. That's right. It's their livelihood. These are small businesses, people who have worked their entire lives to open uh, these shops, these businesses. And then on top of that, you have 30 police officers who were injured on the first night of the riots, one run, run over by a car, a chance to stuff police officers in trunks, a, a vehicle with explosive devices. Uh, let me be crystal clear why this is happening. It's because Democrats have enabled the mob. When they attack our police officers right. verbally, it ends up that they end up being attacked physically. It's called what Jim Comey said, the Ferguson effect, and we're seeing it play out yet again. So as we have 70 new infections a day and 29 states have hit highs, is the president's approach herd immunity? No, the president's approach is therapeutics, which, by the way, have given us the lowest case fatality rate in the world, far lower than Europe's. Right now, when you look across the hospitals in the United States, the percentage of COVID pa patients in hospital beds is 6%. It's because this president did things right. You have a 99% survival rate under 70 uh, and, and above 70 because of our therapeutics. It's very close to that because of what this president did, tearing down bureaucratic barriers, tearing down regulations, paving the way for therapeutics. We have done this right, and the Europe-United States comparison tells that story. All right, Kaylee McEnany. The fact is, every time I've uh, called the president, he's quickly gotten on the line. When we asked to get support for that mercy ship in Southern California, he was able to direct that in real time. What the federal government did working with states was a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, we got 2,000 of these field, field uh, medical sites uh, that are up, almost all operational now in the state uh, because of his support. And those are the facts. Uh, uh, his team has been on it. I know a team when they're on it, and I know a team when they're not on it. His team is on it. They've been responsive late at night, early in the morning. We are working very well with FEMA Region 2 and with the Army Corps of Engineers building four field hospitals. Uh, that was a decision the president himself took, and I'm grateful for it. These were just extraordinary efforts and acts of mobilization. And uh, the federal government stepped up. Uh, we needed help, and they were there. He said everything uh, that I could have hoped for. Uh, and we had a very long conversation. Uh, and every single thing he said, they followed through on. We've got to have double the number of ventilators that we requested for that area of the state. And in fact, uh, we got them in frankly short order. Have we lost anyone because we didn't have a bed or we didn't have a ventilator or we didn't have health care staff? No. The president was extending support for new swabs. So uh, conversation, commitment, uh, promise made, promise kept. Now, to be fair, maybe Biden's not telling us because he's forgotten his own plans. Watch Biden's staff quickly swoop in to shuffle him along during a quickie escape the basement trip to Pennsylvania. Here's the deal. One of the things that, that, that is important is that, um, keep in mind, although they're going to vote on uh, uh, Barrett, I think today. That was terrifying. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. I mean, who's going to say it better than Kaylee? So, 
I want to congratulate you. This is a great-looking couple. We almost had the Dodgers. Are they that good a team? They're pretty good, right? Pretty good. Oh, you're pretty good, too. And you're a great couple, and that's a beautiful baby. Thank you very much. Congratulations. She's smart. She's smart. She picked a major league ball player. You know what it is to get in the major leagues and stuff? You got to be in shape. You can't look like these guys out here. Nah, she's great. But did anybody say, especially on the pandemic, has anybody said it better than that? That was on This Morning or Fox. Fox and Friends. And uh, I got to tell you, that, that group, that threesome, they're great, right? They're great, right? It's a great group in the morning. But she said it on Fox and Friends. Ainsley, Steve, and Brian has been really great, right? Brian has been great. Now they treat us good. We're thrilled to be joined by your governor, who I know is up here speaking, but I'm going to introduce him a second time because we love him, and he's done a great job, and he loves the people of Florida. Ron DeSantis, Ron. Thank you. And your lieutenant governor, who is a fantastic woman, and she loves her state, Jeanette Nunes. Jeanette, thank you. And we have some warriors, you know, that used to work with Ron. And without them, maybe I wouldn't be standing here. Remember, 197 to nothing, Congressman Michael Waltz. Michael. He knows more about, where is Michael? Michael. You get married yet, Michael? Huh? Please get married quickly. You'll be so depressed, Michael. If you don't, you're going to be very, very depressed. Thank you. Thank you. You better do it quick. She's out of here, Michael. Another great friend of mine and a warrior, Gus Bilarakis. Gus. Thank you, Gus. Great job. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. And Greg Stubbe. Greg, thank you very much, Greg. Great job you're doing, Greg. These people are tough. We've had some, tell you what, we have some incredible people in Washington. Attorney General Ashley Moody, who's doing a phenomenal job. Thank you, Ashley, for everything. Doing a fantastic job. Florida House Speaker Chris Sprawls. Chris. And so young. Florida GOP Chair Joe Gruners. Joe, where are you, Joe? Where's Joe? Joe, how are we doing, Joe? We'll be out of here so fast if we don't win this election. He'll be gone. We are doing well. Yep. We're going to win. We don't win. Oh. Ah, our country will have trouble. Then it's and, and vote for the congressman and vote for the Republicans. They want to do what's right. They want to do what's right, and you know it's the right thing to do. We have congressional candidates Scott Franklin and Anna Paulina Luna. Wait, I put something out. They have my full endorsement. Great going. I hear you're both doing very well. Win, please. Doing very well. Great, great. Under my administration, we're reversing the damage that Joe Biden and his group have done over a 47-year period. We're bringing the pharmaceutical industry back here and back to regions of Puerto Rico. They took it out of Puerto Rico, devastating Puerto Rico. Joe Biden voted to eliminate those jobs and to send them to China. And we're reversing that, and we've been reversing it now for over two years, and it's moving very rapidly. Last month, I also announced $13 billion in disaster relief for Puerto Rico. They got hit hard. They're in a little path that causes problems. You know that, right? A lot of hurricane problems. Speaking of hurricanes, you have a lot of hurricane problems, too. And I'm always there. Ron, am I always there? Ron calls up. Sir, I'd like to speak to you. What is it about? Another hurricane? Yes. How many billion do you need, Rod? But I'm always there. 
And Rick, I'll tell you what, Rick Scott's been great. He's been great. And Marco Rubio has been great. He's been great. Marco. Very strong guys, strong leaders, good guys, too. Really good guys, Marco and Rick. You have great people here, great leadership. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in United States history. And we have now built over 400 miles of water, of wall. And we'll have it finished very shortly. It'll be finished very soon. You don't hear about it anymore. You used to hear when they didn't think I'd be able to pull it off, and that was a tough one. They were willing to close up the country over the wall. So I had a party, totally strong party. Bad politics, but strong party. Bad policy. But they didn't want a wall. But I made a, a really terrible mistake. I should have said, instead of, we will build a wall, I should have said, we will not build a wall. They would have given me all the money. They would have said, they would have said, we demand that you build it immediately. But then they said, walls don't work. And I said, no, walls work and wheels work. Those are the two things that, those are the two things that work. Everything else gets obsolete in about 15 minutes after it's discovered. Biden wants to terminate our travel bans and surge refugees from the most dangerous places in the world. He will open the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. And you saw what happened three days ago, the beheading in France. And today it happened again. And we give our warmest regards to President Macron, a friend of ours, a friend of mine, a friend of the First Lady, the great, two great people. First Lady of France is a great woman. Under the Biden plan, the horrifying attacks in France will come to our cities and our towns. And I don't want to speak too loudly about this. And I knock on wood. This is real wood, you know? <laughs> this is real wood. I can tell anything having to do with the White House and the President. It's real wood. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, here. Let me knock on this piece. That's definitely. But you know what? Look at what's happened. Long time, right? I don't want to say long time. And you know, the first call I get after we win, the first call I get will be from Iran. They're going to want to make a deal because their country has been devastated. They have been unable to give money to terrorist organizations that they've given routinely for years. Their GDP is down 27 percent this year, which is the highest anybody's ever seen of any country one year. Think of it, we're up 33.1, and they're down 27. And they're going to want to make a deal, and we want to make a deal if we can. We want them to be a great country, but they cannot have a nuclear weapon. They cannot have a nuclear weapon. And we're going to help them. We're going to help them. We're going to go with them and help them and do whatever we have to do. And I hope that happens, but I believe that. And I even said, don't deal with them now. They're going to want to see what happens with Sleepy Joe, because if he won, China will own us. Iran will make another crazy deal where they give them $150 billion or $1.8 billion in cash. Think of that. We have so many things. What, what we've done, the deals that we've made, it's, uh, it's very scary to see. I watch it, and I say there has to be something wrong because nobody can be that stupid. Nobody can be that stupid. Under my leadership, we're keeping the terrorists, extremists, and violent criminals the hell out of our country, if that's okay. If that's okay with you, some of you might object because you have that nice liberal point of view. But if that's okay with you, we'll keep them the hell out. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including 11.2 million — think of this — $11.2 million right here, MacDill Air Force Base. Has anybody heard of MacDill? Has anybody in the audience, Mr. Congressman, you, you're the one that got it you're the one that got it included, Walt. And we also passed Veterans' Choice and Veterans' Accountability. They all said it was impossible. They said it was impossible. And we took 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate, destroyed it. And we killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi, who they're looking for for 17 years. Al-Baghdadi is dead. And then we took out the world's number one terrorist by far, the worst in 50 years. 
Kasim Soleimani is dead. He killed many of our soldiers. He killed many soldiers from many countries. The most feared man in the Middle East. He's gone. I withdrew from the last administration's horrible Iran nuclear deal. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And got the building built for a tiny fraction. You know that story, right? Tiny fraction. I called up our great ambassador, David Friedman. I said, David, let's see if we can get it open. They wanted to spend $2 billion to build an embassy. Do you believe? And it would have never happened. I said, David, go around. Do we have any land that we own? With the government, we own everything, right? Even in other countries. See what we have. He calls me back the following day. He says, sir, we own a great piece, much better than the piece they were going to buy. We didn't buy it because I didn't like it. I didn't like the location. Does that make sense? Because I'm in the real estate field. I didn't like location. Location's very important. I said, see what we have. He said, sir, we have a piece that's much bigger. It's in a much better location. And it has a building. Now, remember, we're going to spend between a billion and two billion dollars. I said, well, what's the building? He said, the building is a building that's basically unoccupied. It's pretty big. We could fix it up. I said, how much? He said, let me get back to you. He gets back to me two days later. Sir, I think we can do it for $390,000. Right? Right? You understand that, Mr. Congress? So I said, you know, it's the first time I've ever done this. I said, David, that doesn't sound good. It sounds too cheap. Make it a little more. Make it 500. Okay. And we did. We did it for 500,000. And you know, it's Jerusalem. And a friend of mine, Ron Barron, he's so proud of a wall opposite the elevator. Every time I walk in, he shows me Jerusalem stone. I go crazy. Ron, I don't care. I said, David, you're in Jerusalem. It's very expensive in New York. Can you get Jerusalem stone? He said, yes, we can. We have it. We can buy it for nothing. I said, good. Make the building out of Jerusalem stone. So he made it out of Jerusalem stone. We had it opened four months later for $500,000. That means, because you know what? Not only would it have cost more than $2 billion, you wouldn't have that building built for 25 years. So we got — we did something a little different. We got something done for a tiny, tiny fraction of what it was supposed to cost, and we had it open in three and a half, four months. And it's now our embassy. It's a great embassy, and it's recognized Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Sort of a great story. And I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. They've been working on that for 52 years. We got it done in two hours. And it's not easy. And every president wanted to do those two things for many, many decades. But they, they couldn't. And I understand why they couldn't. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure against. And instead of never-ending wars in the Middle East, we're forging peace deals all over the place, you see. No blood in the sand. No blood in the sand. No cost. Biden and Obama made a pathetic one-sided deal with the Castro dictatorship. My opponent stands with socialists and communists. I stand with the proud people of Cuba and Nicaragua and Venezuela in their righteous struggle for freedom. And we're winning. We're winning it. It's going to be easy. We're winning. The last administration also negotiated the terrible Obama-Biden-Santos deal with Colombian drug cartels surrendering to the narco-terrorists. You know what that means? That means drugs. Our First Lady sits on our commission. She chairs the Commission of Drugs and — on drugs in America and how to get rid of it. It's a Blue Ribbon Commission, right? And we're down 19 percent. We had a little setback with the uh, recent problem with — with the China virus, but it's uh, getting back under control. But she's taken it down 19 — she and the commission have taken it down 19 percent. And she doesn't want it mentioned. She doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't want to talk about it. See, if it were me sitting in her position, I'd be holding a news conference. I have done an incredible job. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. But she has done an incredible job. Thank you, honey. Under my — thank you. Thank you very much. Under my administration, we worked with Colombian officials to seize or disrupt 227 tons of poisonous narcotics since April alone. 
The fact is, I've done more in 47 months than Sleepy Joe Biden has done in 47 years. It's true. It's true. No administration in the first three and a half years has done what this administration's done. We've rebuilt our military. We've done the biggest tax cut in history, biggest regulation cut in history. What we've done is incredible. Even environmentally, I tell you what, we're not going to go over a list. We'd be here all day, but no administration. And you know, the fake news doesn't even call me on it. They don't even, if I'm, usually if you make a statement, they think it's like 1% off. It's like a headline the next day. In the coming weeks, we will distribute a vaccine, defeat the virus, and complete the great American comeback. We're in the process. A vote for Republicans like these people right down here is a vote for the great American dream. That's what it is. I remember Abraham Lincoln, the great, the legendary Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Would you please remember that? Nobody knows that. They know it now because I like to say it. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. It's already started. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will defend religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. Your Second Amendment will be defended. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. And I told you we spent two and a half trillion with a T, trillion dollars, trillion on our military. We have the finest rockets, the finest missiles, the finest jets, F-35s. We have the finest tanks and submarines and ships, all made in the USA. And our nuclear stockpile, we are in a position like no other country in the world. We're the envy of every country, Russia, China, North Korea, no country in the world has what we have. And just a lot of religious people in this audience pray to God that we never have to use it. And it's more likely that we won't have to use it now that we have it. But just hope that we never have to use it. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, lower drug prices even more, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. It's already happening, NASA. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who's standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Florida. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your boss, pull them out of the chair. Come on, boss. And you got to get out and vote. There's never been an election more important. On November 3rd, we must finish the job and drain the rest of the swamp. We've done a lot of it. From Pensacola to Miami, from Orlando to Jacksonville, and from Tallahassee to right here in Tampa, we inherit the legacy of Florida. Oh, you know it, right? We inherit the incredible legacy of Florida patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this beloved nation. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, dug out the Panama Canal, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and from right here in this beautiful state, landed our brave American astronauts on the face of the moon. You've done a lot. 
We made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We're winning. We are winning again. We are winning again. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Florida, we have made America powerful again. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Florida. Get out and vote.